and we're live hello 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 everybody we are here live on phoenix 92.5 fm and streaming on youtube twitch mixer and uh twitter periscope. Uh, and periscope that other one thank you uh, and with me i have uh bryn dara and katie say hey everyone hey everyone hey everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually we're just going to keep adding to that list and you're just going to have to sit there and it's going to be like... There, that's, a, that's the show. It's just... just just reading all the platforms that it's on. There's actually, little known fact, there's a second book in the Iliad, right? Where No, sorry, it's the first book in the Iliad where it's literally just called The Catalogue of Ships and the whole chapter is just all the people that we're fighting and that's basically <laughs> well, what, that's, what's going to happen. That's like ha- that's like the first third of the of like Jason and the Argonauts as well. It's just listing everyone that was on that boat because everyone was on that boat. <laughs> they should have just or said like the parody. first the first chapter of Metro where it's just listing like all of the stations. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just said and all the lads were there, and that yeah. just would have been enough. <laughs> all the lads, sir, whatever. not appearing in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're absent uh, Keen again for a second week. He promised he'll be here next week, so looking forward to that. Um, for all you Keen fans, I'm sorry. You can exactly, log off now. Exactly. You, you can leave now. It's only us. Um, Lisa is also not going to be here, but she has a bunch of content coming up and also on the, on the channel as well. She did a panel this week, which is super good for anyone who likes the darker stuff. One of the good things about being the person that posts, that posts all the stuff up on the YouTube, I actually listen to everyone's content, and I'm like, this is really good you know so just like I would recommend so you don't you don't sleep at all then well Bryn knows this yeah no that, that, <laughs> Dara doesn't uh, sleep unless he's completely exhausted exactly and even then he only sleeps for about maybe two and a half hours if he's lucky give or take it all depends on much coffee I have at the point in time yeah the secret is he's asleep right now <laughs> yeah. I'm just so good at, at just being able to go onto autopilot yeah. that I can sleep yeah. He gets micro sleep is... every time he blinks. Yeah. Micro sleep is the way to do it. Actually, that's like that's not a bad way to do it. If you if you sleep certain points of the day, you're pretty good. Yeah, he's basically he's basically like uh, Jack from Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> we don't talk but, about that. Yeah, no, no but the, but again, this is this is this is his project mayhem. It's just a podcast. <laughs> it's just a podcast. <laughs> project mayhem. Yeah. Oh, I we say, say I, as as off camera, we're filling molotovs. <laughs> well, 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 I did see a pretty good meme today, uh, and it was all about Arch Linux, and it was like the first rule of Arch Linux is to tell people to use Arch Linux. Like, the second rule of Arch Linux is to tell people about <laughs> Arch Linux. And it, it, it's funny. Third actually. rule is drink the Kool Aid. I got it. Well, here's the thing. No, it was funny because I I tagged someone who we worked with, Bryn, and yeah. uh, he did appreciate it a great deal because he will tell you in great detail about using Arch Linux yeah, uh, and why you should use it. And yeah, yeah. for anyone who doesn't know, Arch Linux is like it, it's like the Lego of Linux where you need to build every specific thing before you can use it. Yeah. it just I mean, know. given the naming conventions, I can only assume it is King Linux. <laughs> <laughs> Give or it's, take, it is. I mean, good, th- but... that is that is what Linux Arch Linux fans will want you to think. Yeah. Uh, full, for certain, full customization, no user yeah. friendliness at all. It's just no. Like the the instruction manual is a wiki. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I... it's like get good noob, and then that's basically it. Uh, right. So. Yeah. You know, we're we're not going to tackle The Simpsons. We're going to start kind of taking breaks. So we are going to, in fact, do season six next week. Yes. Because mm-hmm. things are like society's getting back into it now. So we don't have all the time in the world. Ain't that just the way? Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> Katie over here has had something very exciting this week. <laughs> Katie had something very exciting today. Today. <laughs> today. <laughs> today. It came. It came this morning. <laughs> Ain't it beautiful? Awesome. Now, I got it, my switch. No, was it from Amazon or was it from a local proprietor? That's what I want. No, know. so I went literally everywhere. Amazon was not delivering to Ireland. Um, all the game shops just didn't have them. They you just cannot get them. Yeah. I found like one on Smiths somehow, oh, which, which doesn't make sense because Smiths was the first Smiths. place I went to, mm. and they didn't have it. And then I went everywhere else, and then I came back to Smiths, and they were like, "Oh, actually, we have it now." <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I heard so, Snits at first, and I was like, "What the hell is a Snits?" <laughs> I'd have to say, I, I, look, "Oh, isn't it? Isn't it's, that it's a in shop that, someplace that far away, Kev." <laughs> I just have, it's it's the thing. It's a thing from Harry Potter. <laughs> I just, I, I, you know, I just have some beef with Smiths after their click and collect policy, and while I get it, I'm like, "Okay, cool. There's the pandemic, blah blah." blah. It's like, listen. If I'm there, 
and I'm a front of you can you just get the item I want and I'll contact the sleep pay tried to get Monopoly like two or two weeks ago and your man's like oh hey click and pay I'm like right so can I buy it now and get it he goes no you have to come back in two days I'm like I'm not coming back in two but days but I'm here <laughs> it's like that's ridiculous yeah. it's just because here's the thing we went to Paris City to get like a deep fat fryer because my, my dad blew up the other one don't ask um, <laughs> but like you could just they go get the item and bring it in and then you'd pay and it's like cool like that makes sense I, right this Smith's policy makes no sense it's like did they not have it or something Cause, no like, your I've man used was it. literally behind them yeah no, like, like, bro I've it's used, there it's like because I've used like the Smith's kick like thing a few times over the past couple of weeks yeah and it's always been within the hour if not immediately no this guy was like two days I'm like no <laughs> that's, that's strange not, and I was yeah. like right I guess I'm gonna buy it off Amazon I'm like my advice for any proprietor don't make it easier for people to shop online than you yeah. you know that's that's how you Darryl, yourself out business Darryl, what you should have done is the little Britain joke where you just go oh just wait and just stand there and just wait for him to respond what I, should have, what, what I should have done is I should have come back with a copy of the fountainhead and beat him to death with it and be like there you go <laughs> this, is what, this is how you drive yourself out of business um, mm. but anyway yeah, read the fountainhead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna start peppering in more like Iron Ran into these po- podcasts. It's my gimmick now. Anyway, <laughs> everybody's gotta have a bit. Oh, and, oh, so, this is your new Triple H bit, is it? This is my new Triple H bit. <laughs> <laughs> For flip's sake. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, actually, is I think I don't. I don't think I asked you this over the whole thing, Katie. But is this your first Nintendo console, or have you had stuff before? No, so um, it's my first one in years and years. Like we had, we so when we first started out, we had the Nintendo sixty four, mm. um, and we literally all we had was Ocarina of Time, and it was amazing. <laughs> and oh, yeah. then we got um, Mario Kart, not Mario Kart, the other one, Mario sixty four. And then I didn't get another Nintendo console until the GameCube, but it had been out a couple of years at this point. Mm. And I got it, again, just for Zelda. So I have, like, two Zelda games. I think I have Ocarina of Time again and The Wind Waker. And then I got a Wii, years after it came out again. Uh, uh, out of for... context, that sentence, that sentence was really funny. And then yeah, I, got I had a Wii. A Wii. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, got, I bought a GameCube <laughs> and then I, got, then I had a Wii. <laughs> I had That's a Wii. That's better. <laughs> um, for Twilight Princess. Mm. And then skipped the Wii U because I was like, I'm not buying another well, console. As just... everyone did, you skipped yeah, well, the Wii U. See, the thing about it as well is Wind Waker is probably one of my, if not my favorite Zelda game. So when they announced that they were doing Wind Waker HD, I was really, really tempted because I love that game. But then I was like, I'm not buying another Nintendo just for Zelda. I, I can't do this anymore. Oh, I, like, I, I was this close to buying a Wii U solely for Bayonetta 2 <laughs> until they announced the Switch port and I just, I just got, yeah. that got called off immediately um, yeah. so now I have the Switch again years after it came out yeah. <laughs> and, like the right time to, like yeah you didn't want to like you kind of didn't want to buy it within the first couple of months because the only game until like the Christmas period that year was Breath of the Wild yeah. it is boggling to me that it, it boggled my mind that they didn't bundle the one two switch game in with it that never makes it oh my god what the hell what is yeah actually because when i was when i was getting it on when i was looking at the bundles on smith's uh breath of the wild is not part of a bundle at all and i was like that's the game that i want mm. well, and it was they, all you know but that's what they know that's what yeah. uh, that's what they're like hey we're gonna get you to pay mm-hmm. for both you know that makes that makes and sense that, that is exactly how they get you it is. Yeah, and it doesn't no, matter. It, it, it 100 is. And the thing about the Switch is, like, the thing about Nintendo consoles is, they don't. They have the killer apps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which they, which is a term they want to get rid of, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But so I'm just going to but, use it. In, in but killer way. apps, killer apps is a terrible way to describe anything. It is, but I'm going to use it out of pure, <laughs> um, pure disdain. So the so <laughs> the, the killer app uh, is, oh. process is, is what Nintendo use. You know, so they'll have like the one or two games that everybody wants and then instead of bundling and bundling it they will you know make you pay for it so the same thing they did with um, yeah. all the way back even with the with the NES like you know you had Duck Hunt and Mario but then they didn't throw in yeah. Zelda and stuff like that it's just what they do yeah. or even Pokemon mm-hmm. you know unless you're buying a, a specific but the, bundle 
the thing about Breath of the Wild now is it doesn't matter where you buy it, it is still full price. Oh, yeah. That's, and that's Nintendo. I even, that's Nintendo. I, no, but I even oh. looked at places that were selling it secondhand. Oh, yeah. And it was oh, yeah. still full mm. price. Oh, here, like, that's yeah. the same with uh, the 3DS. You know, if yeah. you, if you yeah. buy the Pokemon like, Black or whatever. It's still fifty euro, even in but the, CX. This isn't this isn't even uh, this isn't even a Nintendo thing. Grand Theft Auto Five is still full price. Like, really? oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Grand Theft Auto Five came out in what twenty fifteen? Oh, and they're, and they're, they're keep re releasing it. It's the new yeah. Skyrim, and will be coming out holiday twenty twenty. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, they're yeah. porting it. Yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna say now. I don't like GTA Five. Oh, I, I never played it. <laughs> I didn't like yeah. GTA 5, 4 either. Um, I, until I, I liked it. Which, I, was liked, uh, I liked GTA 5 more than like GTA 4. I like Vice City. Uh, Vice City is my favorite. Vice, yeah. San Andreas mm-hmm. is San also Andreas. great. San Andreas. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, San, I don't have. Uh, I don't like San Andreas. I like Vice City because I prefer the time and mm. I love like that. It's pretty much just Scarface. Yeah. So, I prefer uh, the soundtrack. Oh yeah, for for San Andreas. Like, oh, yeah. a, a lot of, uh, a lot anything of, that has anthrax in it, I'll take. That's yep. also clip that with context. It's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just give me that anthrax. <laughs> yeah. Just 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 give it to me. Like just pour it all over. But I mean, like like that Radio X playlist is basically my taste in music. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you all, know, but like, V Rock is my taste in music. Yeah. You know, I know I, some of my favorite memories of. Like actually being a teenager, some of my favorite gaming memories of, of being a teenager is yeah. playing Knights of the Republic one for the first time. Yes. Playing, Knights of the, playing Knights of the Republic two and being very disappointed for some reason, yes. even though loving mm. it. And you know, just drive or just being on the boat in um, Vice City, listening to V Rock. Yeah, that's awesome. And that was great. You know, they were great. <laughs> one of my favorite memories of Vice City was uh, my uh, myself, my friends were doing. We're just kind of like doing lives where we go around. Doing what, doing whatever mayhem came to, came to pass. Mm. Well, my friends got to six stars and stayed on six stars for for a game week, and I don't know how he did it, but we're just going like this is going on a long time. Obviously, with just... a tank and just using that fly cheat with the tank. Oh no, 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 no! He didn't even he used the tank. Yeah. He used the tank for 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 I think two or three days, and then it got blown up. And he didn't have enough time to spawn another one, so he had to steal cars and stuff. <laughs> you know? It was awesome. That sounds like unfiltered anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> but like the only like, see, I don't think any of the games kind of captured that fun as such. You know, they all took themselves way too seriously. Um, yeah. I, like that's why I love Bully so much. I think Bully is just a phenomenal game, um, and it just. It, any Rockstar game that isn't GTA for me is always like a better option. Like Bully, or even the Manhunt games, even though they're they're not great, they're Red kind of, Dead. Red Dead is so good. Um, yeah, I don't yeah, know. You I were saying with them. you were saying just kind of like talking about you know cruising down the road listening to like V Rock and X Rock. I have the same memory, but Saints Row Two. <laughs> See that's oh, yeah. Saints oh, Row. Man. Yeah, but Two was awesome. I still play Saints Row Four like all the time. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It, yeah. Oh, but, yeah, like that's. But see, that, I think Saints Row captures that fun that isn't in GTA anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. I, but I think as well, like Saints Row Four has this odd level of replayability to it as well. Oh yeah, that's where the because I think like I think all the side mission y stuff, like all the mini games, are ridiculously fun, mm. mm-hmm. and that that makes it more fun to kind of just go through the whole experience one, and the whole grind uh, of it again I, I've been go- I don't know if people are following my tw- my Twitch but I usually stream uh, San Andre- um, Saint Row 4 on it mm. and uh, I'm having a lot of problems like the remaster the one for the PS4 Them. I'm having a lot of problems with some of the missions that I forgot you know the one where you're, you're the stealth missions where you're they're, take- they're ripping off uh, Metal Gear Solid Oh yeah, they're the yeah. One. Yeah. yeah, like they're actually like way harder than I remember them being. So, I would agree with you, Bryn, if I hadn't I just had nightmarish problems with it. It's also the fact that it's probably the best Superman game we've ever probably had. Oh, the it's best, the best. The best, like the best Superman game, the best Iron Man game, the best Flash game, all the best Crackdown. Oh yeah, yep. it is the best Crackdown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like that's one thing as well. It's like, also it's also the best infamous while we're at it. Like I mean, well, well, let's put like I love GTA Four because I modded it to be Iron Man. Yeah. As soon as as soon as I played uh, Saints Row Four, 
stop playing GTA 4 <laughs> didn't need to anymore the game yeah. is just there oh man but so much fun and like I, I also just love that you can the character is fully customizable to the voice and everything as well yeah. Oh, as so. soon as as soon as they gave me the character creator, I made him as green as possible. <laughs> green and shiny. That was yeah. my go-to for my Saints Row 4 character. Yeah, green yeah. and shiny. Fair. Yeah. Like Fair. money. Yeah. <laughs> per- personal favorite. President favor- money. Yeah. Personal per- favorite thing to do is make a beefcake woman with uh, the British man's voice because it's just the most ridiculous thing in the world. <laughs> no, no. You make a scrawny, tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little woman with the Nolan North voice. Yes. That's See, Nolan North is great, but then I play Dead uh, Deadpool. And I'm like, oh, it's Deadpool, you yeah. know. And that's that's the problem with Nolan North. It's like if you play any of his games within the period you're gonna play uh, Saints Row Four, it's just him again. So, but yeah, Nolan but at least Saints Row Four does label it literally Nolan North. <laughs> yeah, 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 fair, fair, fair. Yeah, like I, I went, um, I literally went from uh, Deadpool to Spec Ops the Line. And it's like it's impossible to take the game serious, the Spec Ops seriously, because well, I don't know, I, when, when you start using white phosphorus, that kind of yeah, makes it pretty. Yeah. But it, it just makes it the saddest Deadpool. <laughs> like, and Deadpool's already sad. Yeah, he is. By the way, if you guys haven't played Spec Ops: The Line, it's like the best game in the world. It's very good. It's um, very, very good. It's like, have you guys? I've Katie or Kev. I haven't. I've heard. I've heard all about it. I just never got around it's to it. It's the best game ever made like no no hype because it's like actual from a gameplay wise not really but from the journey that takes it on <laughs> well, like, well, look. it's the best game ever except for the gameplay well, no, <laughs> if well, the gameplay wasn't there it would be a very it, good game it hates you to play it <laughs> no no it, what I mean is like uh, games are more than just you know clicky bang bang yeah. they're um, they're all about the story and the journey I, Like, and the fact I, yeah. this game takes you on such an emotional Heart wrenching mm. journey while having like the most basic point shoot click mechanics ever. Mm. You go into it, and like, I wouldn't say it's a game you enjoy, it's a game that you survive. Experience, and experience. it's a good experience. It's so good. Like, I, 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 I kind of put it on the same kind of pedestal as The Last of Us in that the gameplay, it's better than Last of Us. Last the, of put us. It, you can again, like, it's I put it in the same kind of class where it's like. You know, the mechanics are all sound, mm. but it's the story that yeah. you're there for. Yeah. Like, it's enjoyable to play. It's very, like, it's very uh, immersive, but it's the story that keeps you. It's the story that you talk about. Like, it's, 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 the, it's, you know, the, it's the only game I've ever known that starts mocking you during the during the, the loading screens for what you've just done. Yeah. Like, there's a bit of spoilers where you go in and you gun down a whole village because you're trying to find a terrorist. And then the screen just goes, Do you feel like a hero now? You're like, yeah. Fucking hell. That's you know? some Hellblade it's nonsense. So dark. It's so dark, mm. you know? Um, yeah. yeah, I would recommend it. Like, if you haven't played it, pick it up. It's one of the, it's, it's one of the best games and experiences you'll ever play. So enjoy. Yep. Definitely. Um, also, I've been on the video game thing. We will go back to the Switch. Sorry for derailing it completely. But <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Deus Ex. And I, I mentioned this in the show last week. But I have to go back on one of my comments from last week, which is why I want to bring it up. Played Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Um, finished it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. It wasn't great. And then I did New Game Plus. And I've never done New Game Plus before. Right? This is my first time ever playing New Game Plus. Right? For anything. For anything. Anything. I just didn't oh. see the point. It was. I was just like, oh, I'm done now. I said, you know what? I kind of want to get some achievements or trophies. So I was like, right, I'll go play a bit more. And the game is so deep it's unbelievable <laughs> like I finished it in 6 hours and I played 20 hours and I'm not even halfway through it now god so I'm um, having you know. I'm having like the same thing but with the Resident Evil 3 remake <laughs> fair and I think that's that, it like, that it's, is it's, that is a 6 know. hour game that I've managed to squeeze about 20 hours out of <laughs> but like it's I, I don't even know why I kind of ran through the first mode so fast I kind of just went through everything and then playing it now like there's a whole city just there that you can go in and do missions for everything and it's so much more enjoyable now to be fair one of the biggest problems with Deus Ex is it, it it's like a survival horror game that has no horror so it's like you have to you have to really yeah it's the same mechanic so you have limited bullets you have limited power two shots will kill you so you have to play very conservatively you know the way you can't go in all guns blazing because you don't have the guns 
But when you have your name, isn't, he like, yeah. a, isn't exactly. he like a bionic man or something? Yeah, but he's still a man. So yeah, he can do some cool stuff, but if 40 soldiers are running around you all firing at you, and they're already augmented, you're going to have a bad yeah. time. So that's what I mean. Like, Yeah, you'll take down about 12 of them, but you won't take down all of them. And that's kind of what happens. So you have to kind of use your brain by like hacking uh, terminals and gas mains and stuff like that. But when you do New Game Plus, you're basically a god. So you're able to just go in and cause absolute mayhem. Pew, pew, yeah, pew. well, yeah. Like, you don't even have to do that. You just have to go and like heads explode. And you're like, yay. <laughs> so, you know, it's, <laughs> so you're just like, it's fine, you know. Um, yeah, so like it's the first time that I've actually like had that experience where I was able to, to do that. And it's a, it's a great game. It really is. It's just, you know, I didn't think I'd get that experience from Deus Ex. Plus, it's managed to tie me over from Cyberpunk because Cyberpunk... Uh, 2077 20, well, 20, 20, 20, yeah, something 20, was supposed to be out this year so this is kind of yeah. like carrying me over before wait I have they back. pushed it back again yeah, it's, it's August it's it was August, August. Yeah. They, they announced it for August like at the end of last year yeah okay. well, they, they announced it for April and then it's August so it's, you know that's where it is now so this will this will tie me over and anyone who's jonesing for it you can pick this game up for like a fiver on PS4 like it or even like it's really really cheap so uh, i heavily recommend that do it for Keanu always do it for Keanu mm-hmm. by the way he's running a contest now at the moment where you can win a date with him which is hilarious <gasps> like a slight date how do I happy. enter I for, uh, for completely unrelated reasons for education, for how for do I enter for very related reasons <laughs> for educational purposes <laughs> yeah. uh, no it's, for, it's definitely for a friend definitely asking for a friend I don't know I, I'll, um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Hey, sorry. Uh, hey, Bryn. It. Sorry. It just looks like Bryn's setting something on fire in front of him <laughs> with the lighting. Yeah, that's just my web browser. All right. <laughs> nice screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, my my uh, um my wallpaper is uh the you gotta do what you gotta do, um uh, uh banner from uh, Futurama. Uh, oh called. yeah. A new segment. What browser is Bryn using today? Madness. Well, sorry, that's the wrong answer, Bryn. The, an- the right answer is the Brave browser, which is kindly sponsoring us. Please click the link below and help the show out. Use oh, I was browser. using Brave. I of always course, use Brave. We only use Brave. We only use Brave here. That's it. Yeah. Hashtag shameless plugging. <laughs> yeah. hashtag, the only kind. Ha- hashtag yeah. give me money. Well, <laughs> you know, there, there is, I tried doing shameful plugging before, but it wasn't very successful. So. They told me to put my shirt back on. They told me to leave the public space. Just, you know yeah. what? I thought one and done. Why not? The police were called. Yeah. It wasn't a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. I got hosed down. It was yeah. really cold. <laughs> Yeah, so you got to be careful. Um, also, I'm reading books, which is something that I haven't had a chance to do for a while, speaking of which. And mm. I started reading... Swear to God, um, you're going to start talking about Fountainhead again. No, Fahrenheit <laughs> uh, 4150. Yeah. So I've never actually read it before, um, but I watch Equilibrium and I'm like, oh, this is pretty much where he took a lot of this from. So uh, watching that book, uh, watching reading that movie after... Bleh, reading the book after watching the movie. So um, yeah, I, I, so- do, I do English well. So how much of that is happening right now? All of it. Uh, it's really scary. Uh, it's like, well, actually, you know, there's a good graph where it's like 1984, Brave New World, and Fahrenheit uh, 4051. It's like, we're kind of in the middle. And it's just like, wow, this is really weird and terrifying. So you read the book, actually. It's uh, it's quite good. The movie's pretty decent as well, I hear. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It's from the 60s. That's the Fishburn. Yes. There's a Fishburn film as well with it. Which is from a bit more recent. Yeah, a bit more recent, but the the sixties one is a bit more well known. Like it's like the mm. nineteen eighty four one from the seventies, yeah. yeah. or seventies or eighties with um, John Hurt. Yeah, yeah. So. Was there four fifty one with John Hurt? No, 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 no. Fishburne was in a most recent adaptation. No, of no, but like I just just mentioned eighty four had. What? 1984. I was going to say 1984 yeah. had John Hurt. I was wondering if he yeah. got who was in the two of them. And yeah. actually, here's the thing. That's why he plays um, the Sutler. Sutler in well, Sutler Thief, and Vendetta. Thief Vendetta. Yeah. It's like a reference to it. And it's like, oh man, that's so clever. That movie is fantastic yeah. too, I will say. It doesn't get enough. I fun. really, as like, as great as the graphic novel is, the mo- I really enjoy the movie. Uh, Hugo Weaving's V-speech get like just, just tickles me every time. I, You know what? I like the comic 
other graphic novel, but I actually prefer the movie. Um, Cause Hugo Weaving, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. Cause Hugo Weaving, and like the presence that he brings to it is just unbelievable. And I like Natalie Portman. I think Natalie Portman does a really good job too. But the the Wachowskis, the way they just kind of, um, I think they're involved in has a really cool, unique style. So it's just like I know they didn't make it as such, but they were heavily involved in it. And you're like, yeah. But like, fun. I love the fact that Hugo Weaving has such a presence, and you never actually see him. No. No. no, that's it. That's which is, what a good which is amazing. Is. It's yeah. the same way. Is, yeah. uh, it's the same way. What's his face? The guy from Dread. Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Urban. Oh, yeah. that Urban. is. I will tell you now. That is our Christmas family tradition. As soon as we sit down for Christmas dinner, Dread goes on every year. Class. Dread is yeah. so. Good. That's a hell of a. That's a hell of a family tradition. <laughs> it's the best. That's so good. Actually, I was watching. I was watching uh, clips from Dread. You know where? You're, uh, actually, when you're looking at that movie, you forget how good the cast is because they hadn't reached proper fame yet like Cersei's in it Lena yeah. Haiti. You, you totally forget Cersei's yeah. in it you forget that um, Donald Gleeson is mm-hmm. in it yeah uh, it's just like the guy, there's the guy who plays um, Avon Barksdale from The Wire is in it as yeah, well yeah like, you, like you, it's, you, it's just amazing like but I was watching a clip you know where um, he's giving the speech saying you know you forget that you exist inside Mega City I am the law and then he fires the white phosphorus at them mm. you're like oh my god what a, what a <laughs> nutcase this is amazing oh, I always so like I, I know it's a great movie and I like it, it and yeah, yeah Carl Urban's incredible oh and, dude he's so but good I, so I good. always remember watching that not very long after I watched The Raid and the range oh, yeah. is better. Well, that's so here's, here's yeah, go on. Is, there is a here's misconception what, here, around this. Here's what I will say about comparing the two films. Hmm. Like, I will, I can, I would never watch the raid with friends around because we would just chat and we would do, we we would chat, we would drink, we would do whatever. I will watch the raid by myself so I can concentrate on it because hmm. the fight scenes are so damn good that I have to pay attention to it. It's I funny, can't actually. do that. Whereas with Dread, it's just like ah, beers. It's fine. You can chat. It's funny. Can... The first time I watched the raid, I watched it with a group of people, and we were really? all stunned silent by what was going on. <laughs> None see, of us were talking the entire time. Yeah. What, what I would say about the raid is that, and it, it's like they they didn't cop. It's like the the zeitgeist thing yeah. where they just kind of had the same idea at the same time, and it just kind of appeared yeah. around the same but time. Because that's they, happened they, a bunch they, of times they, before. But, they uh, both did Die Hard, as far as I am concerned. Yeah, you know? yeah, like no, yeah. like I'm not saying that. Like it's just it. It was literally so soon after each other that like I was watching. I was like I can't mm. separate the two, and I do prefer this one. Mm. Yeah, Dread is really really good. I, I wish like mm. I wish it was out a little bit later because then it would have just been picked up as a Amazon Prime or Netflix plus and a Netflix series. Because that's mm. the only thing where I'm like, just make that as a series and it will go on for years because it has so much to give. Like even the the most uh, recent, like even anything from 2000 AD, let's do a thousand, 2000 AD um, anthology, anthology series. Anthology series would be great. You know? oh. like it's so good. So I, have, good. I have Judge Carl over here, um, and that's one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. Um, and yeah, you can just pick it up. Or even even not Judge Dredd, you know, you can do ABC Warrior or uh, Road Troopers and like that, and just pick them up. I don't know why they don't make it Netflix. You make everything else. I I'm sure it's a matter of time. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think there's the appetite for it because they're not as um, well. I suppose the boys was made, and the boys is like something I never thought would be made into a TV show. That's it. Like I think like with these like with these sorts of comic series, like yeah, between like the real kind of cult classics of the likes of the boys and Preacher, I think it's a matter of time until one of the streaming services gets to gets to a dread. Yeah, gets to a dread series. Mm. I would watch that. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I had to have Carl Urban though because that man just—that's the role he was born. Like I, I love Carl Urban and everything. I even like Doom. Like I oh yeah, know. Doom is so bad. It's good. Oh, I think it's good though. I like it because I was a big—I was a big fan of Doom Three, and it's very Doom Three. Yeah, I love the the, the actual first person sequence. It's amazing. I, me- I remember being mm. in the cinema for that. And me and friends were like, "Oh my god, they just—they're just doing Doom Three. This is great." <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, I remember I rented the DVD because I knew it had making of for that sequence and I was like oh that's more interesting than the film <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know the, the rock does a rock bottom in it so he, do, the he rock does is do a amazing rock bottom. in it he, he yeah. does a... oh man he chews scenery so bad when he turns into a bad guy as well but it's, it's brilliant one of the, but it's one of the only movies where he plays like a straight bad guy yeah like uh, Stone Cold 
bad guy, no pun intended. Well, it, it, it wasn't even a straight bad guy because at the start you think, okay, everything's great. And then as it goes on, he gets more and more like mm. crazy and power hungry. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's just so, so great though. I love that bit where he's just like, are you going to disobey? Your commanding officer, like, <laughs> it's so great. Like, actually, your man, the, the Night King's in that, which I didn't realize yeah, he was. He in is. It. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. Although, here, here's the weird thing, right? I only found it out like this year. I was sitting literally across the way from him uh, during Game of Thrones when we were getting makeup done for uh, for that for scene. Game of Thrones. No, well, no, he yeah. was. He's obviously Night King, so he was there. But yeah. I was a white, you know. And uh, I'm like, fuck! I could have went over and like said, hey you were awesome loved you in doom yeah, yeah but i didn't realize and I, to- and I totally would have said that and like you know got kicked out let's be fair no. nobody loved him in doom i did a soul in doom i just like I just, this is cool he's one of my favorite characters because he's such an unlikable dick yeah yeah but uh, <laughs> i was like hey that's doom's one of my favorite movies that that film has a weirdly good cast though it like, does it, also has one, it all it works has a, it has one of the guys from uh band of brothers is in it as well really yeah the guy the uh, pinky uh, he's oh. in Band of Brothers as well. Yeah, he's oh, one wow. of the Jewish soldiers. Yeah, um, oh, wow. yeah. There you go. <laughs> no, I think, but it's, I, think that like, mo- I think that movie gets a bad rap, guys. I think it's fun. No, it's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it, it's a Con Air kind of film where it's cliched and it's a bit hackneyed, but it's fun. Like I think it knows what it is. I think yeah. it's aware that it's like, hey, everyone here is having a good time. This is really yeah. dumb. I mean, yeah, like it's like going, this you know. was still around right the time of like. When the only other video game movies coming out were the Uwe Ball video game yeah. movies, yeah, and like no Evil. one was, no, and Resident and, Evil, yeah, that's a get, that's a, that's you know what, I will stand by that movie. <laughs> Resident Evil Apocalypse has the best soundtrack or at least mm. album music based on ever. Mm. But yeah, like nobody was shooting for the stars when it came to video game music back then. No, <laughs> well, it's basically so I think when people, it's just road, it's just the best of Roadrunner, you know, two thousand. One to thousand four. That's yeah. <laughs> basically it. Like, I mean that that model is basically video game movies right up as far as that live action Tekken that live action Tekken movie. You know, a live action Tekken movie. There, there no. is, and the guy who plays um, <laughs> Hey Hey Achi Mishima also played. Um, uh, was also in the Mortal Kombat movie. He played Shang Tsung. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. What? It, God. Yeah. It, oh it's, no. But oh yes, at the th- same that, time. That, that, that movie <laughs> is like that. That movie for the lo- for a while anyway went like, well, it's on the technicality. It's one of the better. <laughs> it's one of the better uh, video game movies I've seen, purely because of how bad most video game movies are. Fair, I would still stand by the first Mortal Kombat movie because the first Mortal Kombat movie is fantastic. Yeah. Like the I, fight I, scenes I, alone are great. And the music. I love Mortal Kombat 2 for all the wrong reasons. Uh, annihilation. <laughs> annihilation. Oh, yeah. so, it's a shame it's you so will die. <laughs> so too bad, bad you will die. It's so bad. So great. So bad. But what so I what I love about what I love about the first one actually, you know the scene where Johnny Cage fights Scorpion? Yeah. That was added on like the last day. The last two days. Oh, they shot it? it in a day, yeah. They were like oh, walking wow. they were going past the tree and they're like, let's shoot there. And yeah, they just decided they're awesome. gonna shoot there. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. So fair play. That was that's awesome. Because that's like, such a good fight scene, like Yeah. Oh man, that <laughs> Oh, Mortal Kombat! What a film! What a train wreck of a film! I can see the flashbacks in your eyes. The first, right? look, yeah. the first Mortal Kombat, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Honestly, I think it's a perfect movie. Stand by it, no problem. Fight me, IRL. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I challenge you to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, Just a chain oh. from off screen. <laughs> yeah. I I now doubt your idea of what good pacing is, Dara. That's oh, well, look, the only thing I'm going to say. Come here, right? F- from a, from a series that had no story. Yeah. They made one, and yep. I I would say that those movies are better, like pacing wise, than the actual game now, which tries to have <laughs> so much story that it's yeah. ridiculous. So has has just speaking of Mortal Kombat, has anybody seen that somebody started a petition to make Ross from Friends one of the playable characters? Oh, oh my god, what? But like not not David Schwimmer, Ross. Ross. Well to be fair, it's the, same, it's the same when you're watching Band for uh, Band for Brothers and Ross is in it. And I know and, <laughs> and like you're like and I know obviously that's not the character's name, but I'm like, he's just Ross. Yeah. What is he doing yeah. in World War Two? Like, David Schwimmer can't play anyone no, else now. Th- there's a movie called A Pupil that has Ian 
Ian McKellen in it and he plays uh, an ex-Nazi uh, Gestapo leader but he's hiding in America and David Swimmer is the principal right and it's a really serious character piece then David Swimmer shows up and you're like why is Ross doing this you know why is he a school principal it's just anything he's in you're like wow not but yeah, no, I can I can see Ross summoning dinosaurs to eat Shang Tsung. Yeah. I can I can visualize that. Listen, no, they put no, no, Robocop no, no, in it. No, 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 not summoning dinosaurs. Summoning uh, Monica. <laughs> and he has Unagi. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. Picks up a couch, that's, throws that, at them. Instead of him having a fatality, it's a new Unagi. Oh, it'd be so good. Yeah, it'd be so good. Like I don't know. I, oh, I haven't man. played the new Mortal Kombat. Actually, like the newest one. Mortal Kombat 11 or like the DLC from it but I don't know Robocop's in it and I think Robocop's in is great right Bryn? No. R- remember when he Which showed Robocop? Up? <laughs> is, it, is it like the old good Robocop or is it the one who's the guy from Altered Carbon? No Carbon? we don't know there, there is no new Robocop. <laughs> no well according to the, look, from what I can see on the design it's it's old silver Robocop. It, it, <laughs> no, it's, the, actually, it's the Peter Weller Robocop. It's Kev not. is right there is that wasn't Robocop that was stopped to miss crime. Yes. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Yeah. He was the newest Transformer. Yeah. Oh, God. Who weirdly had a human hand. Yeah, a hand. Uh, that remake what did it was... do with that? And Rorschach was the bad guy in it. R- Rorschach was a bad guy, but he wasn't the bad guy. My- Michael Keaton was the bad guy. Uh, Michael, Michael Keaton's Ke- Michael always Ke- the bad guy. Uh, Michael Keaton is, you know, anytime he's the bad guy, he's not really. You're like, ah, oh, come on, Batman. Just, you know, <laughs> stop. Except for when he's Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yeah. Birdman. Uh, a bird bird man. <laughs> Mike, oh, man. Michael Keaton has like the weirdest career ever where it's like all his movies are great but for totally different reasons but everyone not Dumbo watch... oh, I haven't seen don't see that that's on you you watch that of your own accord I just pretend that doesn't exist yeah uh, I would not I would not watch any Tim Burton movie now particularly if it's a, if it's a Disney property after Alice in Wonderland it's like no that's fair you ruined you ruined my favourite Disney movies thanks for that I didn't make a sequel to it thanks for that well so, the first um, Alice was okay the second one was like what are you doing yeah it's just like, no, you, you why you me. why you bring who let Sasha Baron Cohen in here <laughs> no he was okay but like they they took you know Johnny Depp's Mad Hatter who was like a fun aside in the first movie and they made the second one entirely about him and mm-hmm. it's like he, okay, he's a fun side character, but he's not strong enough to carry a movie on his own. Yeah. But that's Disney all over, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. With Johnny Depp, they just go, well, Johnny Depp can carry a film because Pirates <laughs> worked once. And then Pirates 5 came out and everyone made, realized that the decisions they'd made were wrong. How many Pirates movies? I think there's like six of them now, right? Or are they rebooting like it? There is, there is five. There's five. But the fifth one it. is appalling. Yeah. The fifth one is so appalling that I don't remember being upset by it. I just remember being like... <laughs> Why is this? Actually, I went to go see it by accident. That's oh, no. I want to be vividly here's, here's, upset by it. Vividly, vividly <laughs> upset. See, I, I had no attachment to it. I'm like, I, I've been going on the ride since I was a child. But for me, it was like, mm. this is a fun thing to do in Disneyland. Not a movie that I'm attached to in any conceivable way. So here, here's a question I've wanted to ask anyone who's watched either the fourth or the fifth film. Because I've never met anyone who liked the third film. Oh, Why did you see? Turtle. Why I did like you the see? third one. Did you, I like the third one. Hold on, even with yeah. the weird intermission for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have a soft spot for just how convoluted the end of that trilogy got. Yeah, and it was ridiculous. It just got so complicated, and it was like there was literally no need for this, but it no. was like visually appealing. But like, you know, everyone was just entertaining to watch, just fumble oh. around this heart in a box. But see, uh, it, Jared it, Dirt. <laughs> But see, it's just like the Mummy Tree as well, which is the same kind of thing. And massive... Didn't happen. Didn't yeah, but, happen. Oh, no, but that's the same kind of thing. It's like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, why did you, what did you do? And why is there an intermission? Why was that a thing in movies again? Because I know in the 20s, Lord of the Rings. it made sense. No, hold on. The Lord of the Rings hold is on. the reason why. No, don't badmouth Lord of the Rings. No, but uh, the Lord of the, Re- <laughs> the, Lord of the Rings <laughs> no. is absolutely the reason why it, there's it, intermissions it, again. It's the root of the problem, though. <laughs> It's not though. Yeah. It's fine if you it, can't handle it. It started. Don't go in. It, it restarted uh, the trend. No, no, <laughs> no, no, because the Lord of the Rings is the root of every problem we're facing in cinema now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I blame the Hobbit. Fair, okay. No, the, Look, the, the, you can bad the Hobbit. The Hobbit. The you can bad the Hobbit all you want because that is that doesn't get enough bashing. It needs the to be Hobbit, like a, the it Hobbit needs to be like a, a Hobbit movie stuff. bashing day that everybody just beats copies of the movie. Whacking day. Uh, Whacking day. But with the Hobbit movie and just. Oh god, uh, Peter Jackson! Why did what? You know, no, I know what happened. They gave him a big dump truck full of money. No, well, you know what they what did happened, though. So. You know what they did? They said, "Here you go, Peter. You can make you can make two films with Guillermo del Toro." And he went great. And then they came to him six months later and went, "Here's more money. We need three films." 
and no Guillermo del Toro and he went oh okay and then like it just got worse from there and he's like it's like well we've already started doing everything so hey, I guess all that we'll pre-production continue no. <laughs> like I guess we'll just continue making the film now they're the most soulless movies ever though like there's no heart in them oh. at all that's the problem like that's the, like it's fun to, I, lo- I love that Christopher Lee is there and like it's one of his yeah. last roles and he still looks badass but it's like mm. this you deserve better than this just make yeah. just, he, he did he deserved a Charlemagne film, and we all know it to be true. Hold on, he has two <laughs> albums about it, and it's a Whopper. Yeah, and so. he could have yeah, done. He could have. He deserved two a movie. Albums. <laughs> he deserved, he deserved a, a movie. Film. He deserved a movie. You know he's actually related to Charlemagne. Yeah, that's what the yes. albums are about. And it's you just know like, what? Amazing. He deserved not to be cut out of Return of the King. That's what that's he deserved. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. But it's weird when you're watching the when you're watching the movie when you're watching the movies, and then you go and watch the extended editions where they burned yeah. the Shire down. <sighs> like I'm okay with the Shire <laughs> not being burned down in movie canon because it's it's such a weird thing in the book anyway we're like ah oh, so yeah, yeah well, that sucks that, that, was, like... that was the weird thing about the that was the weird thing about the books where they decided that like because Tolkien just couldn't really figure out how to end it so he's like I know what I'll do I'll do the whole story again but smaller <laughs> like <laughs> and you know that's how it happens and like I mean and then the film decided I know what I, I can't really end the film properly, so I'll end it three times in the course of, in the space of an hour. You know, like, I, me- I remember seeing that movie, and then I think me because me and my dad and my sister, and my mom would go watch it at Christmas because they came out every Christmas, yeah. you know. And I remember we all kind of got up to leave, but everybody in the cinema got up to leave after the <laughs> second time, and then it comes yeah. back, and we're like, "What?" I guess we're sitting down again. <laughs> I was like, "What's?" That? It was I, such I, a I, weird experience. I've never had ever again. Yeah. Where it's like pe- I, everybody went up to leave, but then sat back mm, down because you know they thought it was over. I remember when I remember the, like I remember the first time I kind of the first like false finish where like they're on the side of Mount Doom and there's lava around them and then just this blackout and people in my in the cinema started booing because <laughs> they thought it was over <laughs> oh, what a happy care. ending oh. now, see I, I don't understand people that do two things at movies and it's usually in America to be fair no offence yeah. Americans but you guys do it and it's weird they clap at the end of movies and you're like why yeah. okay, it's not a play they're not they clap there. at the end of airplane landings too. Yeah. Uh, no, I, not I, a crime. No, to be fair, I've heard that every like that's that's just universally that one, like actually no, when you go into Europe, it doesn't happen. But the more mm-hmm. you go towards America, the more the clapping at random things starts. Yeah, it happens in the UK yeah. as well. It, that's what I mean. Like <laughs> it's bad. Uh, yeah, like this whole sphere that's influenced by America it seems to happen. Those, you go to Italy and you do that, they laugh at you. And point yeah. mm-hmm. right so. so. and it brings children to laugh at you so it's yeah. like you know but but at the same time though italy dis- italy has drivers that think it's totally fine to drive at, at 100 kilometers an, an hour around Brent, mountains let me so. ex- let me explain something to you rules in italy are not yeah. rules they're guidelines <laughs> yeah. So that, that's how everything is, you know. So yeah. like when you when Once you when understand you... that you'll have a good time in Italy. That's just yeah. about I just when I you just can don't class yourself st- as mountain folk. There are no rules anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules yeah. anymore. But you see, I have to disagree with you though, because look at Finland. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no only rule. a crime if you get caught. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just like you take your life in your hands driving yeah. in Italy. So just that, and that's why yeah. because it's all rules. But one thing they will Literally. not. One thing they will not do. Is clap at the end of flights, and that's the main thing. That is a crime. And truly, they are the more evolved society. <laughs> Italian people are known for using their hands a lot, you know. Yeah, but they don't feel the need. To, you know, I think they've. I don't know. It's just the weird. But yeah, I I don't understand the clap. But like, okay, hold on. At least if you clap at the end of flights, the the the, the uh, pilot might actually hear you, right? You're like, okay, fair enough. Yeah. The the. Ben Affleck is not going to hear you if you're watching Justice League and you clap at the end of Justice League which I don't know why you would um, maybe it's, it's over because <laughs> yeah. it's over you know Ben Affleck's not going to be but like but surely, oh, surely that's like a sigh of relief when it's over like it's just a collective oh, well, here's, like, a, here's a question for you guys right now I'm personally I'm quite excited for this because it's a thing are you guys mm. going to watch the Snyder Cut uh, miniseries no. um, it's a miniseries yeah it's like it's like, it's like 12 hours long or something like that god damn no I, no I okay. will almost certainly watch it at some point but I'm not going to watch it straight away you know? you, okay you're gonna take away my nerd card again but I am 12 and what is this oh so Justice League came out right and Justice League was a flop because it you know was and for the past like 30 uh, about 3 or 4 years there's been a, a call to release 
the Snyder Cut because uh, Zack Snyder made it and it's finally happening as part of HBO and HBO mm-hmm. HBO Max or whatever they're going to release it and they're releasing it not as one movie but as like a mini series so either three two hour blocks or like one hour blocks each right and, and it's release. on HBO it's on HBO so basically it's going to be the yep. entire plot where they're going to bring in flesh everything out and have like dark side in it and all that kind of stuff so I know I'm excited because I thought the movie is going to be something totally different and it wasn't so I don't know like I think it'll be interesting but I still think it's going to be pretty poor like I don't have high expectations for it but Batman vs Superman on cult was pretty decent actually Martha except for that <laughs> <laughs> I mean that, like that's the thing that annoys me about about that film is that like even if it had good content that moment is so bad it does ruin the film well like now Batman is a very damaged man you know <laughs> He's not healthy. He, he, he dresses up as a bat and goes out and beats up poor people. Hold it's on, like... hold on, while I pull up my whiteboard on Batman. <laughs> so, like, obviously, when he does that, it's going to be like, well, you know what? Maybe I should stop punching this literal god because we have the same Ma's name and she died too, or is going to die. You know, it makes sense, I suppose, because he's not a very healthy man. He should have, like, you know. So I, 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 I under, you know, I empathize. I, I, I'm able to accept that this crazy Batman is. You know, I'm just saying it's a big leap in logic. That's a Dara lot of is... backward storytelling you're doing right there. Dara, <laughs> is this where you tell us that you that you dress up in rubber and go to, go out and beat up vagrants? No, no, I I, 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 I don't just, have those resources. <laughs> I just I just liken the whole Martha thing to like you know that one bit in Step Brothers where they're like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> but I, look, here's the thing: I would have much rather them actually just went and did like, uh, um. What's it? I can't remember the, the team up name for Batman and Superman. It was great. Oh, um, Batman, Superman, world's uh, finest, world's finest. World's finest. Yeah. If you yeah. had it on the world's finest team up with that, we're like, hey, we're best friends, and it's Batman and Superman being buddy buddy. That would have been hands. cool. Yeah, but it's like, no, the, we didn't even get that. Like, we get it for no. like a second, and then Superman dies, and then comes back for no yeah. for some reason, and it makes no sense. So I don't. I, I think given Zack Snyder time to tell us because Watchmen. Like, the Watchmen movie is great. I love the Watchmen movie. But the Watchmen extended cut, which is four hours, is phenomenal. But it's like watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. You need to watch it in in breaks. So, look, it's okay. I, I know what to expect for Zack Snyder. That's the thing. You know, I have to cut him a lot of slack because he's a great visual storyteller. But, my God, he needs an editor. Yep. Cut um, Zack some slack. Exactly. <laughs> Poor guy. He, he, you know, he had a bad run of it. But, look, it is what it is. You know, I'm excited. And I'm going to watch yeah. it. I'm not going to pay for HBO Max because... No, but um, I tell you what, I will pay for Shudder. Everyone should download <laughs> Shudder, and if Shudder want to give me the subscription, they can. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Shudder, give me just, money. Just, <laughs> just gonna keep screaming into that void. Just, just spon- get get Shudder to sponsor the podcast. Just exactly, you know. I will just say shut that. up and give us the sponsorship. <laughs> I'd actually, <laughs> as mentioning it, I I do want to bring to light the one title on Shudder that floored everything else I've ever seen that I sent on to everyone the other day. And that is a title called Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. Oh, wow. Oh. Yes, from 1988. They don't make but, movies like that anymore, sadly. And the, the, it's the description that gets me as well, which is three horny nerds, two sorority sisters, and one badass chick unleash a mischievous imp Oh. I know I sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Shutter.com. <laughs> Shutter.com, exactly. For a low, low price of three ninety nine a month. It's three ninety nine a month? Yeah. Hot damn. It's might, super actually. cheap. Cause... Super cheap. And if you go over to their Twitter account, there is shut in for the promo code for a free 30 day trial. So, can't go We're wrong. already doing your job for you, can't, Shudder. Can't Just... go wrong. No, I tell you what got me about it, right? It, not only did he have like a really cool like clip of everything, like like every kind of genre horror horror you want is there. But they even have Chopping Mall. And finding Chopping Mall in today's day and age is very difficult to find. And I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe that's there. But um speaking of streaming service, I came across a, a knockoff streaming service that like it's free I can't remember the name but I will put a link in below but basically it has like the um, 
you know the way there's like transformers and then there's like fun, uh, former trans or whatever where it's like they, they do like knockoffs of it or like instead of Pacific Rim it's like Al- uh. Atlantic Rim that kind of stuff and apparently this is a streaming service that has all this but in oh, there yeah, they have like God. they have their parallel conjuring universe so instead of having La Llorona they have like the tale of La Llorona or instead of conjuring it's the conjuring and you're like this is literally Black Bleaster like as a thing <laughs> it's better <laughs> it's better it's better, better. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh man! And I'm like, I just love that we've now transcended something that used to be a sketch to being a streaming service. That is, it's that's so definitely good. just some college students that were like, "What if we just like did all of the? What if we just, we have like a 2003 handheld camcorder? What if we just made movies?" But there's a good mm. review, and I will link it in the description below. I promise of someone actually going through it, and like the art of it is all pretty decent, and then it cuts to the actual footage, and it's like some of it was shot in a day. Some of it was shot in a week, and some of it was shot in an afternoon, and it varies in quality based on those descriptions. So like, some of them, like there's like the, the nun is like a Halloween costume that they bought in the shop. And it's like all handheld. It's it's absolutely amazing. So, you know, I I need to sign up for that because we don't get enough enough of that stuff nowadays. Mm-hmm. Once it has sincerity, I'll watch it. If it's something, if it doesn't have that heart, then there's no point. People have to try, even if it's bad, just try. It has to have it has to have the heart and soul of trolls too. Yeah, at least, at least. At least yeah. If it's going to be bad, at least make it. You know, have some kind of yeah. zazz. But look, like, I mean, it, it, if you can't make a good film, why why just settle for mediocrity when you could go down in history by making something intentionally bad? Exactly. And boy, you know? do we mean go down in history? Yeah. Like, like, the, like the, the, yeah. room, see, the thing about the room is the room that he was trying to make a good movie. Just yeah. didn't understand that it was bad, but leaned yeah. into it. Like Ed Wood g- was trying to always make good movies too, just until the pornos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he did actually go. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's how he finished out his career. Another really good Johnny Depp movie, by to be fair, if you guys have never seen yeah. Ed Wood, have you guys seen Ed Wood? Yeah, no. mm-hmm. Ed Wood's oh my, great. Oh my god, it's one of the best movies of all time. Um, seriously, Johnny Depp's in it. It's from the early nineties. Uh, the cast is great. Uh, pretty much Strange. all. All the I was people, only. W- all the Beetlejuice yeah. cast is in it. Yeah. No, it's strange. I was only watching a YouTube video that mentioned Ed Wood earlier today. <laughs> oh, really? There you go. Mm. Um, but yeah, basically, he, he he's known f- as the prototypical bad movie maker, right? But he yeah. finished off his career making a bunch of porn, so that's why nobody talks about his latter career. But mm. um, yeah, like, at least all his early movies, he was actually trying to make these, you know, movies that just fell apart. But it's funny, when you're on a particularly Irish um, sitcom, and you watch Ed Wood, you're like, this really, the way they shoot this really matches how Ed Wood shot movies. <laughs> I don't know if this is intentional or not. Or not yeah. sitcom, but a uh, soap opera, should we say. Yeah. Um, Specifically made by RTE. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, In Danny Brook. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, seriously, I would recommend if anyone hasn't seen Ed Wood, check it out. You'll have a great time. Bill Murray's in it, which is funny. Um, just mm. seeing Bill Murray in anything is great. Yeah, he's um, always good. Most of the cast of Beetlejuice is in it, which is super bizarre. And Ed, um, which WWE wrestler is in it? Oh, um, a couple of WWE wrestlers in it as well. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it's a really good movie though, and if you like uh, Johnny, good Johnny Depp, it's mm. it's really good. Um, but yeah, that's the thing about like bad movie makers. You know, if if once they try and they aim for it, there's still that sincerity, which. It's different between a movie that you just kind of left like oh, meh, it was okay. Well, yeah, there's a big difference between the enjoyment you get from watching from watching a Birdemic than there is from watching Sharknado. Mm. Yeah, you know, exactly. like Birde- the guy who made Birdemic was trying to make a message about environmentalism while also oh, give it, doing an homage to one of his favorite Hitchcock films. Yeah, and it's different- awful. Compared like, to Sharknado, which well, to be fair, the first one is funny, but then it just gets. But they're they're artless though. Like yeah. they're there's like I mean they're just going. Isn't it funny? Isn't it? There's just only a... so many times you can reprint a meme and stuff it in my po- and stuff it in my like in my letterbox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's um. Oh, like I will have to say though, there is one part where I think Tara Reid gets eaten by a shark and then, like, reappears out of a shark with a chainsaw at one point. And I'm like. What is going on? This movie's just r- ridiculous. But um, I don't mm. know. I thought Tara Reid was dead. Apparently, she's not. 
Thank you, Shannon. No, no, she just looks dead. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. It's weird when you watch Van mm. Wilder, you're like, what happened, Tara Reid? Who hurt you? What, you know. <laughs> Even in Scrubs, she was decent. Yeah. Scrubs is a show I haven't watched in ages, actually. That's a show I need to go back to. Actually, I'm going to give a shout out to a good YouTube channel called uh, V and Fuso, the social, the social injustice warrior. And uh, he does series on stuff, mainly wrestling, but he did a really good uh, breakdown of the day that Scrub died. And he's talking about that. Well, Scrubs is great all the way through. He talks about the. Do you guys know there was a follow up season? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh, infamous. Yeah. Terrible. Hold on. But here's the point he makes, and this is why I bring it up. He said that if that hadn't been called something else, you wouldn't hate it because it's actually not bad. It's just. It, it wasn't Scrubs. It wasn't yeah. Scrubs. That was the problem. He goes, look. There this, is no season nine. Yeah. yeah. And that's what he said. Well, here's the funny thing. Initially, they wrapped everything up, right? And then mm-hmm. the network was like, oh, yeah, well, you can do your spin off. And then at the last hour, they're like, hey, by the way, it's Scrubs now. Mm. And that's what happened. Yeah. So like, kind of Scrubs, Scrubs for me was over the first time JD left. That's fair. The same with me. That's when I kind of stopped watching it. But I, I have watched season eight where they wrap everything up. And I think that's like the perfect ending to anything. Because it's, you know. It, it was it was it was a end. very big hurrah. It really felt conclusive. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, although mm-hmm. to be fair, that's kind of what um, the MCU feels like for me now. You know, where I'm like, okay, it's all kind of over, and they're carrying on. So we'll have yeah. to see what's it's, it's like. Again. But it's like season five of Supernatural, where that was definitively the ending for the show, and oh, then it just lumbered show, on. That's a show in like, of itself, dude. <laughs> that's uh, the Supernatural. Oh, man. Was no, and, and, but there, there was a gif that sums up Supernatural perfectly where it's just like and it's like Supernatural's renew, renewed for another season and it's just a gif of a person whipping a dead horse and that's <laughs> it like and I'm sure they've done that in the show oh man quick, oh. Uh, quick round what's the furthest everyone got into Supernatural season 10 uh, yeah around season 10 that's when I gave up as well season the 10. first episode <laughs> really and you are yeah, yeah. I uh, was like this is terrible the acting is terrible the writing is terrible i cannot do it i don't care how lovable they are i just cannot subject myself to this you know what that's not a bad summation of it but i would say it it, it picks up around season most shows pick up around season two yeah that, that's yeah that's fair it, it kind of it's doing most of it's like a uh, world building in the first two seasons yeah that is um, fair. like for example parks and recreation which is one of my favorite tv yeah. shows of all time is terrible in season one yeah, and then just gets to be one the, of the best shows. It's the ever. it's the moment that um, that uh, uh, Rob Lowe and Adam Scott show up at the end of season yep. two yep. is when the show gets so good. That's when the show and gets pr- incredible. Yeah, yeah. From and from that point on, it's just brilliant. Yeah, like, until season six. <laughs> oh, that's not hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I I liked season I liked uh, season six for what it was. Yeah, I too. didn't I didn't love it, but it's. You know, uh, as a I'll take it over season one every flipping oh, yeah. day. Fair, yeah. As a, 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 a purely for the fact how they explain how Andy got in shape and lost all the way. Yeah. yeah, that is hilarious. Like, you know, what happened? I stopped drinking beer. How much beer were you drinking? And it's like, that was, it's just, it's like brilliant. So great, so mm-hmm. good. Right, guys, we have hit time. So before yeah. we get out of here, what does everyone want to plug, Bryn? Um. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to plug this week, so uh, we'll just move on. Okay, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am still working away on my podcast doing it for the exposure we have episode 6 coming this week and if you haven't watched the previous 5 episodes or watched, listened, whatever if you haven't listened to the previous 5 episodes like what are you doing, go listen to the previous 5 episodes exactly. they're awesome <laughs> Kev uh, you can find me on Anime Crash Course on the network, uh, our Still rocking away on that first episode on One Punch Man. That's up on the network. Our newest one will be up on the first Monday of July, and it's on Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Very cool. And yeah, guys, I'll just say go over to nerdtonomedia.com. Um, all the links are there. Subscribe to us on all the platforms. Follow us for a new show every single day of the week. And yeah, leave your comment, description, hit, smash that like button, hit the bell, all that stuff, because your support is helps us a lot. Everyone who listened on Phoenix 92.5 FM, we will see you next week here on Nerd to Know Basis. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.